Welcome back to another Targets in Focus from Dukoscopy TV. It's been a busy week in the financial world with renewed volatility in European equity markets, reaction to the Federal Reserve's announcement on future interest rates, and the continuing moves by the SMB to counter the strength of the franc. Joining me now to discuss some of their currency projections is the Deputy Global Head of FX Strategy from Credit Agricole CIB, Dara Marr. Thanks for joining me, Dara. There's been no shortage of news this week from the Eurozone and the US. How has that impacted the euro dollar and where do you see the currency heading in the one month, three month and 12 month timeframes? Well, I think one of the surprises in a way with all the trauma we've seen in markets, how relatively stable euro dollar has been. I mean, there, there, there has been obviously volatility within it, but you know, we're hovering around 142. Um, uh, so it, it, there's not been any, I would say, big reassessment, and uh, I think a large reason for that is the market hasn't quite made its mind up yet about whether it should view the dollar as a safe haven or not. Uh, this. But I think ultimately we do end up pushing lower on euro dollar. I think there there is still a quite a large fixation on on the eurozone peripheral problem and, and the idea that it's spreading to other parts of of Europe. Um, and I think ultimately that will be the um, the key driver. You know, on a three-month view, I think we'll certainly be below 140, um, and on a 12-month view, potentially below 130. People are still looking for risk-free investments at the moment. How is the New Zealand dollar coping with that risk aversion? And where do you see the Kiwi dollar heading in the short, mid and long term? The Kiwi's been an interesting currency because obviously it's, it's had a lot to cope with. It, you know, it had an earthquake, it, it weakened in, uh, immediately after that, and then as the economy began to recover and, and people began to think about rate hikes, um, the Kiwi had been you know, one of the star performers. I, I think for that reason, it's, it's been perhaps more vulnerable than many uh, to this kind of mood swing, this, this, this nervousness we're seeing in equity markets in particular. You know, even now at, at these levels, just above 81, um, we're still above its 200-day moving average. Um, I think you know people don't think the overall trend has particularly changed, but I suspect in in the more medium term we will continue to hover around the 80 level. I, I don't think we've got the ingredients for a fresh rally, but nor do I think necessarily we'll, we'll see the Kiwi collapse. Last week, Japan intervened in their currency market. Has that had any impact on the yen? And what are your projections for the dollar yen? Yeah, the intervention certainly had a, had an impact. It, it's reintroduced to a risk in, into the dollar yen market, into the, into the wider yen market uh, during a period, I guess, where you know the yen was at risk of kind of becoming a self-feeding, strengthening currency that that would have caused even greater problems for Japan. Um, so it has had an impact. Um, it doesn't necessarily prompt a reversal. I mean, we're broadly back to the levels where um, the MOF asked the Bank of Japan to intervene uh, the last time around, um, but it does make the market more. I mean, I guess conscious of chasing the yen higher. We saw that, you know, even this morning, um, we, we saw some yen selling because there was a market fear that that intervention was imminent. Uh, I think, you know, beyond this kind of scare environment we're in at the moment, yen really will be driven by the moves in relative interest rates, particularly two-year interest rates between the U.S. and Japan. And I think in any normalisation of the environment, you would expect U.S. yields to rise more quickly than than Japan's yields. Um, I'm not talking about policy rates, I'm talking about two-year yields here. Um, and to my, that mind, uh, I think we'll, we'll see dollar yen push considerably higher. Finally, another country trying to control their strong currency is Switzerland. Realistically, what do you think the SMB can do and will they have any success? Um, I think for the SMB really it's a damage limitation exercise. Um, the, the difficulty of course is that it's, it's uh, currency not been driven by local factors so therefore the, you know, there has to be questions over how much influence um, you know, local players can have. Um, you know they they are having some success. They are they've made it clear that they they want the, the Swiss franc uh, to stop strengthening. They've, they're pumping liquidity in, and that you know we've seen with QE in different shapes and forms elsewhere that when you when you start the printing press, if you like, um, it does tend to weaken your currency. But the global factor still feels rather more dominant. Um, and the second problem the SMB of course has is, is the legacy of its previous intervention strategy, which ultimately didn't prove that successful. So in terms of Perhaps um, credibility, potency of intervention, Japan still ranks above Switzerland on that front. And so really the, the salvation for the Swiss franc uh, in terms of it weakening has to come, come from a change in the global environment. In other words, an improvement in risk sentiment and uh, a revival in equity markets. At, at the moment, that feels a little bit distant. So as I say, it remains a damage limitation exercise. Thanks for that, Dara. There will be more targets in focus before the end of this trading week. So stay tuned to Dukescopy TV. Goodbye. 